my great privilege to introduce the CEO of the WOW Factor and the founder of this beautiful WOW Conference, Dr. Leslie Hume. Beautiful, thank you. The Great Awakening, ladies. You're all feeling it, right? So, I want to share what's next. Did you know that we have been working really hard since the 1950s? You know it, don't you? Since the 1950s, we have been getting an education. We have been willing to take any position to climb that corporate ladder. And for the first time in women's history, we have money and we have education and we're empowered. So we all know that the Dalai Lama said the Western woman is going to change the world. Thank you for doing that. Great job, ladies. <laughs> it's a big job. And we're all prepared. I'm here to remind you that you have what it takes. Some of you are entrepreneurs, some of you are nurturers, some of you are healers, teachers, lovers, sisters, mothers, daughters. And we are here, what I wanna share is the Great Awakening because something has occurred on the planet, Mother Earth, in the galaxy, the Milky Way. Does that sound nurturing and feminine to you? So we all have feminine and masculine. So when I talk feminine, I don't mean woman and man. I'm not putting down the men. They have been holding space on the planet and they are evolving as well. So when I say feminine and masculine, we all have feminine and masculine. I'm gonna encourage you to start raising your feminine leadership traits, your archetype for the goddess. And that archetype is collaborative. So I want to share what I'm calling the new glossary of the feminine archetype. Competition needs to go away and replace with collaboration. We have to stop betraying each other and we have to stop gossiping. The feminine archetype is in need of safety. And so, just a reminder of hunters and gatherers. The men are the hunters, the women are the gatherers. It's primal brain function for us as women to gather around the fire for the purpose of safety. When our hunters are gone, our protectors are gone, and they're hiding behind bushes with their spears waiting for the food, that's why they're not as good at communication as we are. We're excellent communicators. And for those of you that have studied the brain, we have an excellent corpus callosum. It is the connector between the right and the left hemisphere. It's why we're multitaskers. And let me tell you why that corpus callosum has developed so strongly. When we are gathering around the fire, taking care of the children, and communicating with high skill, we are doing so for safety. And our communication skills have gone beyond words. They've gone into telepathic intuition. And there's something in here that we all feel as women, right? We can feel words that resonate truth and love and happiness and joy. And we can feel words that do not. So we want to start paying attention to our trillions of cells our telepathic abilities and our intuition, and we've got to start creating language that makes us feel safe at a primal brain function. So for some of you ladies that love retail therapy, <laughs> you're out gathering. You're actually stimulating the most primal part of your brain. You are gathering because you're actually trying to raise serotonin, and if You've noticed, you can go walk around a mall for four hours and come home feeling completely satisfied. 
right? <laughs> what makes that day even better is if you come home with a couple of bags that you love and you spent the day with a woman that you cherish that you can share your intimate, sacred stories with and you feel safe. There's nothing worse than feeling unsafe for us as women. So the new glossary is collaboration, love, joy, appreciation, and I want you to be mindful of your declarative statements. Life is hard. You don't want to start carrying that at the cellular level, so I want you to get on YouTube and just Google the biology of belief, right? We love Bruce Lipton, the biology of belief. I want you to start using language that triggers those trillions of cells so that your cells start vibrating the new glossary. That is gonna change the planet. And as women, the feminine archetype, goddesses, healers, teachers, lovers, mothers, we can do this. And it has to happen at a cellular level. I'm telling you, when we change our cellular belief, the vibration of the cell raises. So I want you to think of the cell as water. Think of this. Water, when you put into a pot and boil it, you notice the water is bubbling, it's still water. The H2O, the two hydrogens and the oxygen, are moving at a really rapid pace. That is what a healthy, happy cell does. It's vibrating, and we can all tell when someone is happy based on that cellular vibration. That same water you put in an ice cube tray and put it in the freezer, it's still water, it's still H2O, it's still, still two hydrogens and an oxygen. Now it's just vibrating at a very slow rate. That is what sickness and sadness is at a cellular level. Low vibration. What happens, we start seeing the vibration. And what do we say to someone when we notice this vibration? What's the matter? Because we recognize matter vibrating at a low frequency. So start using your glossary and your declarative statements and your beliefs to influence the planet, your communities, and your families. Declarative statements. Life is easy, not life is hard. And I want you to note that dis-ease is where the word disease comes from. It always starts somewhere here, not feeling at ease. So we don't want to create dis-ease. Start using your body like an instrument. It's a very fine-tuned instrument. And ladies, you can tell when a word bounces in there and does not feel right. So start lovingly sharing the best part of you, which is very high vibration. And when you get into a community or a group that is not sharing high vibration, Make it your intention to set a new tone for that group and that community. Start using language that loves and heals. Start reminding women, and I'm telling you, it's just a spark. All you need to do is plant the seed, drop the pebble in the pond, and start using language that educates. And we're going to take it down to the younger generations. We're calling in the older generations that are seasoned as well. So here's the history of women. We were burned about 2,000 years ago. I don't know about you, but I feel like I'm just starting to speak up now. <laughs> Isn't that weird how we can feel that? It just, I feel like we've been asleep for 2,000 years. So the name of this conference is The Great Awakening, because I know you're awake. For some reason, we're all waking up. So we can speak up. We're educated, we have money, and we're empowered. And we're stepping back into the true telepathic, intuitive healers that we are. So start speaking your truth and start healing people, because I know that you're already doing it. Then we got into the 60s. Right, the 50s and the 60s. We started burning our bras at that time. <laughs> For some of the younger women in the room, 1972, when it was that tennis match, Billie Jean King, 
it changed a lot for us, believe it or not. Mm. We could not get a college scholarship for sports prior to that tennis match. So that was a big event for us as women. Through the 70s, we started getting educated and started getting into some of the, the corporations out there. The 80s is when I got into corporate America for 10 years, and that was the era that we wore the power suits. And we behaved like men, right? Ladies, we behaved like men, because it's how we navigated. And back then, believe it or not, there were not daycare centers, and women were considered risk, because we might get trained and then go home and have a baby, and then all that training's gone. So those days are gone, and I was in corporate America all through the 80s when I behaved like a man. And behaving like a man has its uh, problems. <laughs> <laughs> Serotonin goes down, dopamine goes up, we become competitive, and we're willing to do whatever it takes. And it's not pretty. I was wearing pantsuits, and they were usually black or navy. I was wearing my hair back, and I was behaving like a man. And I started climbing that corporate ladder and realized, this isn't how I want to live my life. So 10 years of that, I got out. Then there's the 90s. That's when women really started the daycare centers, and having babies was okay. And guess what? The corporations started noticing our feminine traits as useful. Isn't that funny? We became useful because in this information age, it's when the dot com started coming and there was a lot of information. We have a corpus callosum. We can handle a lot of information because we are multitaskers. So here we are. I'm going to just jump forward to where we are now. And let me just tell you what the research is saying. We are highly valued at every level. And I'm going to encourage you, as women, to start influencing the corporate culture, start coming up with new corporate policies that include the feminine archetype that is more collaborative. And I know you've experienced this. When you get into a collaboration with other people, better things come out of you. We behave better in groups. We need to bring that into corporate policy. We need to take it into the legislative arena so we can start influencing government and politics. We need to get into the education system and we need to start thinking of all the future generations that are coming up. We need to start creating some sustainable products to support this planet, Mother Earth. She's calling you. She's one of us. She's like a big, huge cell that is in the Milky Way of cells or planets. And for those of you that understand the science of the planets and the Milky Way, it's like one big, huge magnet as we are, right? Law of attraction. So that big, huge magnet in the Milky Way is shifting right now. The planet Earth has actually shifted on its axis. We are actually coming up onto the equator of the Milky Way right now. And for those of you that know what happens at the equator, the, the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere of the planet, there's different things that occur. The same is occurring right now in the Milky Way with all of the planets. There's a big, huge shift that is supporting this great awakening. So thank you for waking up and noticing your internal emotional guidance system. This guidance is an above, down, inside and out guidance. So consider the universe, universal intelligence, God, light, source. We are an inclusive group of women with a lot of different beliefs that are higher power beliefs. You are calling in that universal intelligence and you're getting messages. Don't medicate the messenger. Some of you are, because you don't know what to do with the messages. Above, down, inside, and out, and guess what it does? It goes through this innate intelligence. 
and you start listening and you have intuition and telepathic messages. And then what you do is you step out and start expressing. And if you start expressing your truth, you actually get healthier. You think being busy can take away your energy, it actually gives you energy when you do what you love to do. So that is a really good guidance question. What do you love to do? Because that's your truth. And here's what I've noticed in three WOW conferences. Every single speaker that has come to WOW, we have 12 today, we had 24 last time. I don't know how we fit 24 in in a day. We had 24 at the time before. So in three conferences, you do the math. That's a lot of speakers. Every single one of them is authentic. Every single speaker is speaking about what they know. And here's what I've noticed. It's typically through a journey and a growth and some pretty hard times to get to that topic. So. There's one lady, I don't know if she's here, she actually is, and I'm so happy to see you, Kelly. I'm gonna use you as an analogy right now, if I may. <laughs> Kelly is part of the WOW team, and I, I'm gonna just be really honest, I feel like she just went dark. I feel like, where's Kelly? I don't feel her. And you know how we feel people on our radar? Well, guess what industry she's in? The light industry. Isn't that weird? Isn't that weird? And if someone's going to be speaking about relationships, you know they've had some relationship issues. If someone's going to be speaking about politics, you know that they have a political agenda. If someone's going to be speaking about feminine leadership, you know that they've had a masculine way about them. I have a strong masculine side, and I'll tell you, it's my masculine side that has created the WOW Conference. It's the logic, the metrics, the measurements, the organization, it's all that stuff. Where the feminine comes in here is, I'm not attached to the outcome. I don't really have long-term goals. I have some goals, some short-term goals. I have some strategy goals. But what I'm really calling in is some divine guidance, and I just wait for the message and then I take the step. And one of the things I want to share with you that is a quality that I have developed through taking these steps is confidence. When you take steps, you actually start accelerated learning into the darkness, which gets you to the light. So welcome back to the light. Yeah, ladies. So, I just want to go through really quickly why you're having symptoms. It's part of your divine design, and I want you to start embracing the symptoms. I can't tell you as a practitioner how many patients come into my practice complaining of symptoms. And I typically in the past have treated people for neck pain and back pain as a chiropractor. I'm now treating people for side effects of the drugs that they're on, and side effects of not listening to their truth or being in bad relationships, or being in a job that doesn't serve their highest good. So here's a great way to understand your symptoms, and it really is the divine design of your body. Bambi is gonna be my little analogy. Bambi's in the forest, drinking from the pond, having that tranquil, parasympathetic state, which is at ease, and all of a sudden a branch snaps in the forest. What does Bambi do first? <gasps> Deer in the headlights. Right? Deer in the headlights. What's happening there is Bambi freezes so that the predator doesn't know that she's there. And that's why she's brown and she blends in with the forest. The next thing is eyes dilate because now Bambi is assessing the forest for predators. At that time, the blood is rushing to the arms and the legs, leaving the gut. Indigestion can occur and the blood is pooling for fight or flight. Fight or flight. It is how our nervous systems are designed to adapt and to survive. We have a central nervous system to communicate with all our trillions of cells, organs, muscles, the brain, everything in our body is now saying, man your battle stations. Woman your battle stations. We gotta, we gotta clean that language up too. 
So now you're in fight or flight, your eyes are dilated, you have no digestion, you're frozen, you're paralyzed, and you're gonna run or you're gonna fight. So guess what happens? Cholesterol goes up, the thyroid is influenced, the gut is starting to feel the effects of cortisol and adrenaline, the brain is now not thinking at all because there's only one objective and that is to get to safety, to get to safety. And believe it or not, we are living in a culture of cortisol addicts. We actually think that that cortisol is gonna help productivity and it doesn't. So you've gotta start finding ways to be at ease and mindful and get into your emotional guidance system, you can get things done from there as well. More effective. So share that story when anybody complains about their symptoms and just say it's the divine design of your body. Start listening to those symptoms because they will guide you to where you need to go. Diet, exercise, nutrition. Healthy relationships. Doing what you love to do. Movement, sleep. The three Biggest complaints in the U.S. right now with women, pain, they can't sleep through the night, and they can't lose weight. Guess what? When you're running from a saber-toothed tiger or a predator in the forest, you're going to be in pain because you're set up to manage pain in case you get injured. You're not going to sleep because you shouldn't be sleeping if you're being chased and you feel unsafe. And you're going to gain weight because you're in fat storage, because your body doesn't know what it's going to eat next. It's actually the divine design of your body in fight or flight. So you need to find ways to bring yourself at ease and do what you love to do. And that will change what's going on internally with your body. Some of you are on medication. You just need to stay on that medication. I'm not saying get off but start creating another lifestyle so that you can start opening yourself up to new possibilities. So here's what we know, we all know this. Get off the gluten, it's a major inflammatory, right? Get off the dairy. Be mindful of all those GMOs out there, which is a big, big issue, right? It's genetic modification, it's messing us up. Get off all the neurotoxins. There's a lot of food with neurotoxins Here's what happens at a cellular level. On the cell wall of all cells in your body are receptor sites. What happens is the neurotoxin lands on that receptor site of the cell wall, goes into the cell, and starts triggering some of the proteins on your DNA. And so for those of you have that have declarative statements like, oh, this runs in my family. Oh, I always get sick this time of year. Stop saying that because all the cell membrane and the neurotoxins and the receptor sites are doing is flipping on proteins on the genes. And the flip of the protein on the genes does not think for itself. It is based on the environmental stimulus and what goes into the DNA. And sure, you've got some genetic predisposition there, but you don't want to be flipping on that genetic predisposition, which is literally like the fuse box in your house. When you exceed the metabolic rate of what your body can handle, and we have a lot of toxins, you start flipping breakers on your DNA. Here is the really, really cool thing that you need to know about cells. Between you, the cell, and your environment, the foods you choose and the relationships that you're in, between there and there is a space. That's your belief system. So if you have a belief in the world being an unsafe place, it actually can affect the cells. If you have a belief that the world is a loving place and you're using declarative language that say that, that will affect the cells as well. So start paying attention. So what else do we know? We have to exercise. And even if you're in a wheelchair or you're debilitated, you can still get into a pool, you can still sit in a chair and do some movement. They've done studies and Visualization is just as effective as exercise. I think we still need to exercise, so don't just lay in bed and visualize your exercise. <laughs> but check this out. Here's, here's, okay, so I'm going to give you two studies right now. The first study is three groups shooting basketball hoops. 
One of the groups is actually shooting basketball shots all day. The second group is visualizing all day, and the third group is doing nothing. The group that visualized had better outcomes than the groups that actually shot the basketballs. Here's another thing. We've got a lot of young men coming back from the Middle East that have lost their legs or their arms. We've got a lot of injuries coming back. So you've lost your left leg, but there's something called phantom limb pain. They're still feeling the left leg pain. So guess how you get rid of left leg pain if you don't have a left leg? It's not there. You hold up a mirror, you work out your right leg, you look in the mirror and pretend it's your left leg. And guess what? It gets rid of the phantom limb pain because our brains have a map of everything. And guess what? Your cells have a map of everything. So start trusting your beliefs and your guidance. Exercise, diet, nutrition. Get off those neurotoxins and the GMOs. You've got to cut gluten out, ladies. I'm sorry. We love it. It's highly addictive. It's like being a heroin addict when you're into carbohydrates. Do complex carbohydrates, green leafy vegetables in lots of colors. You can do some simple carbohydrates, which are the fruits. That's a good burst of energy. Find healthy sources of protein. We all know that. So what's next? Because we all know this. Everything I'm sharing with you, I already know. So what's next? The Great Awakening. What's next is, as women, we need to get organized. We need to get organized. Because guess what I know about each and, each and every one of you? You've been behaving like a lone wolf. You've been behaving like a lone ranger. You've been trying to do it alone. You've been, being in, you've been behaving independently in a patriarch system. So now it is time for us to come together globally. We have a lot of women on the planet that need our support in a lot of countries around the world. We have a lot of cultures that are reaching out to us. So we need to come together with collaboration. We need to connect with the women out there. And I want to share my analogy of the V formation because I love nature. When we see the geese flying south for the winter, they're in V formation. The lead bird is not one CEO. The lead bird switches position with lots of other leaders in the V formation. And the updraft of that V formation is creating thermal dynamics to support the older birds and the weaker birds the medicated birds and the birds that clip their wings, right? So we've got that updraft of the V formation, which is the wow factor. I named the company the wowfactor.co, co-create, co-power, connect, collaborate, cooperate. I love all those co-words, because we are co-creative women. We need to get in the V formation, we need to create the thermal updraft, and we need to squawk, which is the celebration. Connect, collaborate, celebrate, right? So we got some wine tasting later because we need to celebrate. <laughs> we have some shopping because we need to gather and raise our serotonin. <laughs> There's no men here so we can feel safe, so we can share our stories. Not <laughs> we are letting the men in next year. And they are coming into a feminine seminar. They're not going to come in and try and fix this. <laughs> they're not going to. They're not going to workshop it and do what they do. They're going to come in and notice the Great Awakening, and they're going to notice empowered women that are getting organized, that are CEOs of their own life, chief energy officers. And we are going to co-create leadership. So I encourage all of you here to start stepping up in leadership. Collaborate with WOW. Share WOW with your communities. We are reaching out for women that have seen the movie Avatar. Do you remember when all the tribes came together? Wasn't that fun? And even the animals got involved. I will fly with you. <laughs> <laughs> so join the B Formation. Start connecting and collaborating and celebrating. Share your declarative language that is loving and healing. And hold each other accountable if you hear any victim language or masculine language. Start using language that uplifts 
every woman that you meet. Support the speakers today. They really are sharing their authentic journey, and you can tell where they've come from based on their topic. Start paying attention to what your topic is. And we're always looking for speakers, exhibitors, volunteers. Next year, we're doing workshops. So we are going to be doing something a little different next year. And teleclasses, webinars, we've got to do this thing quickly. So I want to share one of my mottos. Fast is better than best. Start moving quicker. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to be all OCD, which I have reclaimed, organized, what is it, OCD, organized, committed, diva. <laughs> you don't need to dedicate that. It's an empowered place. So start using your addictions to get into your divine purpose. Big breath. What's next? What's next for you? You need to get clear. You need to get clear. You need to believe in yourself. Remember, what's between the environment and you is your belief. You need to believe in you because it will change everything. You need to take massive action. Massive action. Fast is better than best. That was my motto last year. My motto this year, snap. That's even faster than fast is better than best. <laughs> snap. So I want you to do that. Let's do some snaps. You have all just been hypnotized. <laughs> all have been hypnotized. Whenever you hear something in your head that says, I can't do this, I'm no good, I don't deserve this, you have been hypnotized. That's all you need to do. And I'm telling you, just do it. I am worthy. I'm going to jump into massive action. I am so healthy, nothing can get into this body that's going to mess that up. I don't have allergies or asthma. I don't always get sick this time of year. And this doesn't run in my family. I am a creative being and I trust the power of now. I have law of attraction. I am calling in an above, down, inside and out universal intelligence that moves through my innate intelligence. How can I go wrong with that? Right? Yes. Yes. Yes! Yes! You need to make everything you do easy for people to say yes to. Some of you make it really hard to co-create with. And I do too. And when I notice myself doing that, I know, I know I'm sabotaging myself. So relinquish the word no, unless no really means no, right? And that's what I say to Jenny. She would come up to me and say, hey, let's do this. And I say, yes. She goes, oh, you said yes. I'm like, I only say no if no really means no. If I feel unsafe, that's a real no. That's it. Other than that, guess what? When you collaborate and behave in groups as women, better things come out of you better things come out of you. Yes? Yes? Yes! yes. yes. Woo! <laughs> the wow factor. The wow factor. Dot C-O. Because we are co-creative. We are loving. We love each other. We are going to speak in collaborative language that uplifts each other. We're going to hug as many women as we can today. We're going to support the speakers. We're going to go out into the world and we're going to take this message, what's next, out there. What's next is you. That's what's next. What's next is you. You're awake. We are going to infiltrate. <laughs>
corporate policy, government, the legislative process, education, food. Right? We're going to save this beautiful planet called Mother Earth in this magnetic universe called the Milky Way. And Mother Nature is within us at a cellular level. And all we need to do is apply our beliefs, change our environment, put healthier things into our bodies, into our trillions of cells, so that our trillions of cells can start vibrating like that water boiling in the pot. If your cells feel like they're in an ice cube tray, you need to just add some heat. Add some heat and those cells will speed up. Exercise increases cells. Hanging out with other women increases those cells. And when you create happiness, your cellular vibration comes up, your serotonin comes up, so you will not need a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor, which is the antidepressants, which is a big one out there. You're gonna sleep, you're gonna lose weight, and you're gonna get out of pain because you're gonna be doing what you love to do. So thank you all for being here on a Saturday in your own personal time. That's what's next and that's what I wanted to share with you. So I'm going to end with a prayer to give you some time to get to the next room or this room. We do have two speakers at each time, so you need to choose your block of speakers. And whoever you don't choose today, it will be on the website and it will be on YouTube. So you can always check them out after. Start sharing this message with as many women as you know. Start sharing your authentic truth and step into your emotional guidance system. So I'm just going to end with a prayer if you want to bow your heads. I want you to travel inward for this prayer with breath. Big breath in, big exhale. Thank you, God. Love, light, inner spirit, truth. For bringing me here today so I could hear my divine purpose. And what's next for me is me. I'm going to step into an accelerated learning place by following my inner guidance and doing my life's purpose. All these ladies in this room have been waiting for me and I have been afraid to show up, but not after today. I'm gonna to show up with my light, goddess, divine, authentic purpose. And I'm gonna trust it. I'm gonna call in universal intelligence, that above, down, inside, and out calling that is going to express through my innate wisdom so that I can share with the planet. The Great Awakening is when I step into my purpose and share it with as many people as possible. I'm a collaborative, loving, co-creative woman on a mission. Thank you. Amen. Ladies, thank you. Enjoy your day. Bye-bye.